all right then so today uh, hello everyone this is uh, anubhav nath i am a phd student in the department of chemistry at iit kanpur i am currently uh, have just completed my 3 years of phd here and it's my fourth year as running so today is the uh, ninth installment of the course entitled as this um, uh, application of organometallic chemistry with the aid of transition metals their principles to applications and now today the major topic that i will be discussing uh, will be this fischer carbines and schrock carbines also i'll discuss more about fischer carbine complexes or schrock carbine complexes and how they are actually uh, react they react in presence of certain amount of uh, certain classes of reagents so um, uh, i have devised several problems uh, and by answering those who will have a strong or gripping idea about this uh, organometallic chemistry so we shall start with uh, question number 1 so the question number 1 is uh, what is the product when the alkylating complex uh, cp2 methyl ta double bond ch2 is reacted with uh, methyl aluminum i try methyl aluminum try methyl aluminum actually uh, resides in its dimeric form that's why it is better to write it as al2me6 so the type the complex that has been shown here is a cp2 ta methyl double bond ch2 so from the pbs class when we have uh, going through this uh, fischer carbene and schrock carbene molecules this is a metal alkylating complex where this cp that is a sigma electron donor or pi electron donor kind of ligand and methyl is also a sigma electron donor kind of ligand so they are both bound tantalum tantalum is an early transition metal and there are no heteroatomic substituents on the carbon atom that's why this is a special class of or a classical uh, feature of the schrock carbene complex so this alkylating complex is a schrock type of carbene not a fischer type of carbene so when it is reacted with this al2me6 so al2me6 is basically is a lewis acid you know this group 13 metal or complexes like boron complexes or aluminum complexes act as very strong lewis acids now this al2me6 that is dimeric form of this trimethyl aluminum it is also a reducing agent as well as uh, uh, this kind of lewis acid so that's why they react with this this the reaction between this schrock carbene and a lewis acid this is basically the reaction between these two classes of compounds so now this uh, what happens when these two are reacted now it is written here that is the transition metal alkylating complex that is a schrock type this is a schrock type of carbene metal complex react like metal elides this is just an analogy from the heteroatomic elides such as mm, uh, phosphonia or sulfur elide you know this elides are actually termed as heteroatom bound to the ch2 moiety ch ch2 or methylene moiety like sulfur elides are s plus ch2 minus phosphonium elides are n plus or uh, p plus ch2 minus so such kind of molecules are actually called as elides where there is a double bond between this heteroatom and the carbon atom and the electron density is shifted towards the carbon atom and the electron density is dragged from the heteroatom now what happens so this is the answer when this cp2 ta double bond ch2 methyl this is a schrock type of carbene now what is the salient feature of this schrock type of carbene molecule that uh, i have discussed in my previous slide nevertheless we will again go through this so in this schrock type of carbene complexes this metal atom this tantalum here resides in its high oxygen state that is less electron efficient that is it actually it is electron deficient so there is a positive charge on the tantalum atom which is stabilized by the electron density from the cp minus ligands and the carbon is actually having a electron density acts like a carbon anion that's why it is a ch2 minus so ta plus ch2 minus so there is significant electron density on the carbon center what happens when similar situation is occurring with this phosphonium elide this is the simplest phosphonium elide ppa is 3 double bond ch2 so here also the electron density is shifted towards the carbon atom and that's why the phosphorus is in plus state and carbon is the minus state or the carbon ionic type of charge now this carbon ionic charge and since this aluminum dimethyl aluminum i have already stated that it is a very popular lewis acid so that is it is a it has a hunger for electron so it is actually it has a several the lewis acids are those which are actually 
have affinity towards electrons and Lewis bases are which are actually capable of donating electrons. Now since this is a Lewis acid and now it is a Lewis base because it has a carbon ionic character and now it has a pi acidic character. So the electron density is shifted from this carbon towards the aluminium. Now what happens to the Dutch adduct forms is PPHC plus CH2 AlMe3 minus. So this is a classical reaction when any Lewis acid is reacted with this phosphonium kind of elide. Now, since I have already stated that because of the similar electronical behavior with the year, it is a P plus CH2 minus system. Here it is tantalum plus CH2 minus system. So this shock type of carbon has significant resemblance with this phosphonium elide. So what happens here also happens the same. This CH2 minus adducts on this aluminum and this form this kind of adduct, which is Cp2 Ta plus CH3 bound to CH2 Al Me3 minus. So whenever this shock type of alkyl leading complex is reacted with Al2Me6, the similar reaction such as what happens with the phosphonium elide takes place. So coming to the next question. Just uh, pardon me for a mute minute, because, but because in this case, some of the slides parts are missing. So just uh, allow me to check it. All right, now it's okay. All right. So from here we will start. So sorry for the interruption because the entire part of the slide was uh, missing. So the question is what are the structures in the steps of the following reaction sequence? The reaction sequence is as follows. Uh, Cp2 TiCl2. It's a very common titanium precursor which is commercially available. Is Cp2 TiCl2 which is a D0 system and uh, which are having this kind of electron asymmetry. And this Al2Me6 is treated with this Al2Me6 in toluene at 20 degrees Celsius. Then this A is formed. So what happens when first it is pyridine is given to A and then this A star RCO double O R dash is an A star is given. So B is produced. So what are the structures A and B here? So firstly, we will go one by one. So firstly, what happens when Cp2 TiCl2 is treated with AlMe3? What happens here? It's a transmetallization reaction. So about transmetallization or salt metallization reaction, we have already stated in the previous classes. So what happens in this case, since this aluminum is a P block metal and it is a, a metal and it has a high affinity, affinity for the halide substituents. So it actually grabs one of the chlorine atoms from this titanium. So Me2AlCl, that is dimethyl aluminum chloro aluminum is a dimethyl chloro aluminum is eliminated from the reaction mixture and one of the methyl group from the aluminum is transferred to the titanium. So this is actually a kind of give and take policy of chloride and methyl moiety between these two titanium and aluminum center. Such kind of reactions are popularly known as this transmetallization reaction or salt metathesis reaction. You can google about it for more information or more details. So what happens in this case? one of the methyl groups from the aluminum is shifted or transferred to the titanium center. So the product is Cp2 TiCl methyl. Now this methyl has a alpha hydrogen. Now since from this Al2 Me6 this is a dimeric system and is given in excess and only one Al Me3 is now reacted. So another Al Me3 is still free. So what happens here also this is an alpha hydrogen and this is a methyl moiety of the trimethyl aluminum. So this methyl actually takes up this proton, alpha proton of this methyl moiety and gets liberated as methane. And this AlMe2 is now 
bound between this Cl and this CH2. It is act acting as a bridge between this CH2 and Cl. So the product is Cp2Ti, CH2, Cl and which is a bound between this by, by the anchor of Al Me2. This aluminium Me Me2 Al. So there are actually two metallic centers in this in, uh, in this product A and where, where the, one is the d block element and that is the p block element and they are bound by two bridges one is the chloride bridge and that is the methylene or the ch2 bridge this is actually basically termed as a carbon bridge so this specific compound a that you are looking at is a very well known compound that is known as step based reagent now this step based reagent what happens the step based reagent is actually the protected form of the highly nucleophilic carbon complex that is the cp2 ti double bond ch2 just about what we have read about in the previous slide so this cp2 ti double bond ch2 is a very unstable and very highly reactive nucleophilic carbon com compound because the carbon here is actually having a significant amount of negative charge and because of the electropositivity titanium is bearing positive charge that's why this carbon carbon is actually very much nucleophilic in nature and very much unstable also and handling such kind of unstable molecule in the lab is actually not that much easy that's why you need such a stable precursor of this cp 2 tich 2 such that without just in situ in the reaction medium by addition of such uh, a, a bit of base or acid or activating agent this cp 2 ti double bond ch2 will be activated in situ inside the reaction mixture and that will be performing the further steps so here in the system you are seeing that this portion cp 2 ti ch2 is the protected from is the protected from by this guy this step bridge reagent which is actually the active form is Cp2Ti plus CH2 minus. Now what happens in, in such cases? So it is also an efficient alternative to the Wittix reagent. So what is Wittix reagent? We have already stated in the last slide that Wittix reagent is just like the phosphorus version or the phosphorus elide that is the PPAC double bond CH2. So what happens here? The superior activity of this Cp2Ti double bond CH2, why it is an efficient alternative for the Wittix reagent because the CP2 Ti is actually stating, staying in this plus 4 oxidation state. So this titanium is actually highly oxophilic in nature because it is a high in staying in its higher oxidation state. So it is CP2 Ti is double bond CH2. There is the carbon, the shock carbon is an efficient alternative towards the Wittix reagent. Now there are also significant properties that the Wittix reagent does not have but the step based reagent possesses. What are those? The Wittix reagent actually is capable of converting only the keto and the aldehyde moiety to the methylene group. Because whenever we are take, uh, putting any car carbonyl reagent that is RCOCH3 or RCHO where R is any kind of aliphatic or aromatic group. So that can be reduced to the methylene moiety by the aid of this uh, Wittix reagent. But in case of tape based reagent, it is capable of converting any carbonyl group towards the corresponding methylene group such that aldehydes, ketones, ester, they are actually very unreactive substrate because they are electronically reached. So reducing them in terms of electronic in, in electronical enrichment is quite difficult. That's why this esters, amines, carboxylic acids, such kind of electronically dense keto carbon, keto molecule, keto bonds are also uh, transferred or transformed to the corresponding methylene bonds by the aid of this uh, tape based reagent but Wittix reagent can only reduce this uh, CP2 uh, that is the aldehyde or the ketones so what happens in this case so Just uh, give me a minute because uh, it's uh, yeah. Uh. Okay, now it's fine.
all right now in the in the lower part of the slide we will discuss how this from a to b how b is produced so here i have already stated because the tape based reagent is a protected form of the very highly nucleophilic or nucleophilic complex that uh, alkylating shock compound that is cp2 ti double bond ch2 and in turn it is highly reactive or superior than the corresponding wittig's reagent version so how these are actually activated so this tape based reagent is activated by a very weak base as that pyridine so pyridine what happens pyridine attacks on this aluminum and aluminum and this bond actually ruptures to the do this ruptures to this tich2 bond and this chloride actually actually gets eliminated by the amount by the by the product me2 alcl and form this cp2 ti double bond ch2 that is the effective shock carbene complex now what happens in this case cp2 ti double bond ch2 what is how it actually reacts with the how it actually reacts with the car or the olefin or the carbonyl compound is identical to what actually phosphonium elide or the wittig reagent does so in this case what happens this titanium is actually positively charged and carbon is negatively charged this is a keto carbon which is already positively charged and this oxygen is negatively charged so this negatively charged carbon will attack on this carbon this is a new electrophilic carbon of the keto compound and this o minus will attack on the new highly oxophilic titanium since titanium's oxophilicity is much higher than the oxophilicity of phosphorus that's why this fischer carbene or this shock type of carbene that is the protected version of the tape based re of the shock carbene the tape based reagent is highly reactive than the corresponding wittig version so in this case also this is a titanium oxo metal cycle which are having these substituents also now the ring actually collapses in the opposite direction because titanium has a significant amount of oxophilicity because it is titanium plus 4 now this double this bond between titanium and carbon collapses between this and this bond collapses between this so now what is the product this is a methylene because this bond is collapsing between this carbon carbon bond so this is actually rc double bond ch2 that is the methylene carb olefin carb mount and titanium double bond o cp2 is formed so cp2 ti double bond o is so much stable that's why this uh, olefin is formed now exactly by this by this pattern any kind of carbonyl compound can be hydrogenated by to the corresponding methylene version by the aid of this tape based reagent so b when this ketone moiety is a ester moiety that is given so when this ester will be uh, subjected under tape based reagent condition then this c double bond o will be transformed to c double bond ch2 so for the product is rc double bond ch2 o r dash it is actually an a vinyl system with the corresponding ether this is a vinyl system and this is alkyl system so this is actually nothing but a vinyl alkyl ether it's also an olefin also so by the aid of this tape based reagent what actually cannot be done by this uh, phosphonium elides or the wittig reagent is actually able to done by this tape based reagent coming to the next question that is the write the product of the uh, following reaction that is the co5m double bond coch3r is treated with this bx3 in excess amount what is the product metal is actually given as chromium molybdenum or tungsten ax is nothing but the halide molecule halide groups that is the uh, cl br or i and r is nothing but any alkyl group or aromatic group that is methyl ethyl or ph so what is the product of the following reaction so here uh, firstly we have to say uh, or to discuss about the nature of this carbene complex you see this is bearing a metal carbon bond and we have to first identify wh whether it is a fischer carbene or shock carbene so here firstly stay uh, we will uh, proceed via one by one firstly this metal this metal is actually having this electronically withdrawing pi acidic ligand highly pi acidic ligand co so this co is actually capable of dragging the electron density on the metal so when the metal is in high low oxygen state that is metal is electronically rich then these pi acidic ligands come into picture and this is the specific case of the fischer carbene and when this carbon is actually stabilized by the heteroatomic substituent so this is nothing but the fischer carbene's identification so what happens in this case so this is a classically a fischer type of carbene compound 
this fischer type of carbene compound when it's treated with this lewis acid we know there is a group p a block, group p block molecules that is the bx3 or alx3 are actually lewis acidic in nature and this oxygen is actually having two lone pairs of electron is lewis base in nature so whenever a lewis base and lewis acid just like a bronsted acid and a bronsted base uh, makes an adduct and produces salt where also this lewis acid and lewis base will come together and they will also form an adduct so what happens in this case firstly this methoxide oxygen this is a lewis base in nature it will attack on the lewis acidic boron center with concomitant divergence of this x minus so now this oxygen boron bond is formed and this metal carbon bond is also there and the, and the x minus is liberated which is captured by another bx3 to produce this bx4 minus totally you are seeing this is a positively charged com complex and this is a negatively charged complex so this is actually remaining as is remaining as a salt so this is actually remaining as a salt so what happens in this case this ome bx2 and this carbene moiety is remaining in its positive ox plus charge and bx4 minus is negatively charged so in this case when the metal is actually highly electronically rich or electronically enriched this metal actually pushes the electron density in the metal carbon bond and this co bond gets broken and the bond between b and o is formed so bx2 ome is actually a, 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 a trivalent boron species is liberated and there is a triple bond between this metal and carbon which is nothing but a carbine so here you can see that from the fischer carbine can we how we we can be able to produce these fischer carbines so just like treating a fischer carbine but with a lewis base or lewis uh, sorry lewis acid we can form this fischer carbine so firstly then again we will repeat this when this oxygen becomes nucleophilic oxygen becomes positively charged by making an adduct with bx2 and there is a significant electronical uh, displacement from this uh, co bond this metal having a high electron density pushes the electron to the metal carbon bond and that's why the bond between the carbon and oxygen gets broken and there is a triple bond between metal triple bond cr which is already remaining in its plus state and bx4 minus is there and since when one of the co molecules will get eliminated here and here and and the x minus will be transferred because the rc that is the carbine moiety has very much high trans effect you see the carbines are actually staying in the higher level on the spectroscopical series carbines on account of having high electron density and the uh, and the different parameters they are actually ab able to uh, uh, place themselves on the very high state on the spectroscopical series that's why the co that is trans to the metal carbine will be eliminated and on that position x minus from the bx4 minus will be attached so the x oc whole four m triple bond cr that is the fischer carbine molecule will be produced where the co's are actually uh, in a set and this x is actually residing on the trans position from the metal carbine bond and bx3 molecules but so we, when we are starting with this bx2 the one two molecules of bx3 we are actually having again one molecule of bx3 back so since we need the excess amount of bx3 is okay but actually a reaction itself will produce more bx3 so we know do not need actually more than two equivalent of bx3 in this case only two equivalent of bx3 is enough to pull out the reaction and since this bx2 om is a neutral molecule and co is also neutral molecule and liberation of the neutral molecules are actually quite favorable that's why this reaction is also much more facile in nature you see here i have actually for your convenience noted down that subsequent the intermediate loss of a uh, the inter intermediate loss of a co ligand followed by a halogen coordination that is the x minus coordination in a position trans to the carbine ligand when the carbine is having very unusual pi acceptance properties even higher than that of co so it has a very high trans effect property also it has a very unusual kind of pi acceptance property even that is greater than that of co where co is considered as one of the major uh, pi acceptor ligands so now we'll come to the next question the next question i have actually put two reactions here uh, a and b and what are the uh, products of the following reactions so what happens in the first case 
is the complex CP2 TaCl2 double bond CHR when it is treated with this trimethyl phosphine and this Wittig's kind of reagent PPH3 double bond CH2. What is the product? The second reaction is regarding the similar type of tantalum complex CP star TaBr2 double bond CH CME3. It is a tart butyl group when it is treated with this DMPE, it is dimethyl phosphenoethane. It is a very strong chelate binding ligand at 4 electron donor and also reducing agent sodium amalgam is there. So, what are the products? So, we will come to one by one in one of them. The first case, let us see what happens. The CP2 TaCl2 double bond CHR it is actually treated with this PME3, it is a 2 electron donor monoriented ligand, and also this Wittix reagent is there, PPAC double bond CH2, which is nothing but a phosphonium amylide. So, here you can see, uh, sorry, uh, so here you can see this is an alpha proton because this carbon is alpha to this tantalum center and this is an alpha proton. And this alpha proton is actually can be and the, and also this PPA is double bond CH2 is a Wittix reagent. I have already shown in the previous slide that PPA is 3 double bond CH2 remains in its resonance form PPA is 3 plus CH2 minus. So the carbon is having significant amount of carbon anionic character or a Lewis base. Now this Lewis base will be able to at, at, uh, detach this Lewis acidic alpha proton from this complex. So this CH2 minus will grab this proton and also this double this bond it is kind of kind of E2 elimination in, in this case. You have heard about this E2 elimination in a subsequent a base will be abstracting a proton and the bond between the carbon carbon actually gets the from the single bond it will be from double bond and the living group gets liberated. Here also this CH2 minus will be abstracting this alpha proton and the bond between carbon and hydrogen will collapse to the bond between tantalum and carbon making it a triple bond and making it a shock carbine and the Cl minus will be liberated which is also captured by the salt. Since this is a neutral molecule and is abstracting a proton, that's why it is PPH3 CH3 plus. Whenever this PPH double bond sees that the Wittig region will abstract the proton, it is abstracting it as PPH3 CH3 plus. And this Cl minus will also be liberated concomitantly, which will again be captured by this moiety. So it will form PPH3 CH3 plus Cl minus. So by it is a salt that will be removed from the reaction mixture which is easy to handle and the, in the remaining vacant site one of the PME3 group that is externally added stabilizing agent will be bound to the position that is trans to the carbon. So here in this case one of the chlorine chloride atoms can be groups can be liberated but here in the position trans to this carbine system will be bounded by this PME3. So this was a specific case of Schrock carbine that was uh, prepared by Mr. Schrock, his Nobel laureate, 1978, which is actually able to only early transition metals in high oxygen state. Here tantalum is present in plus 4 that is quite high oxygen state and it is a early transition metal. That's why the alpha deprotonation by the aid of Wittig's region takes place and also Cl- is released and it will be stabilized, the electron count will be stabilized by this PME3. So what happens in the second case? The second case is a similar system when this CP star, that is the 5 methyl groups bound to the CP moiety is a similar TABR2 just like here it was Cl, it is Br and instead of methyl R, it is actually CME3 group. So what happens here also, the sodium amalgam is there which is in excessive amount. So two molecules of sodium amalgams are there, that's why two molecules of Br will be eliminated in the version of NABR. So these two molecules of amalgam is there. So it will reduce the central lump center by reviting two molecules of NABR that is that the salt, sodium bromide at the salt and also this alpha hydride elimination that is called this alpha hydride is coordinated to the alkylating moiety. This is alpha hydrogen, it's coordinated to the alpha hydrogen moiety and here since no base is given, as, my, this, as, like, as in this case a very strong carbonionic kind of reagent, Wittig reagent was there. But here it is not the case, this alpha hydride will be eliminated from this alkylating moiety and it will be transferred to the tantalum center. So now since this DMP that is diphenyl dimethyl phosphenoethane is also there to stabilize the molecule, it will be bound to the tantalum center. 
So now it is a it is also prepared by Strock at 1980, and both these complexes are actually Strock carbine complex. So in the first case, it is the alpha depolarization takes place. In the second case, the alpha hydrogen elimination and shifting to the and shifting to the adjacent metal atom takes place. Now we'll come to the next question. So what are the products in the following reactions? That is the tertiary butyl. That is amount tertiary butoxide. The amount is present in in three three tertiary butoxide bound to tungsten triple bond tungsten again bound to C tert butoxide. It is treated with this alkyne R C triple bond C R. And in the second case, the PPA is the whole three osmium HCl CO is a very well known osmium complex. Is treated with firstly this HgCCl3 whole two molecule. It is actually a trichloromethyl mercuric salt, and secondly, it is treated with two methyls of aryl lithium. This aryl group can be phenyl or a substituted phenyl group. So, what are the products in the reaction? So, we'll one by one uh, see to it. So, in the first case. The tert butoxide that is uh, bound to tungsten triple bond tungsten and again tert butoxide is treated with this alkyne when R is an alkyl group. What is the product? Simply, this is a specific class of this uh, transmetallization reaction. Here you can see this R C one R C triple bond C will be transferred to this between this double tungsten tert butoxide center. And because these are actually two homoleptic units, and here also there are two homoleptic units, so we will having two such molecules. So the product is tert butoxide tol three bound to this tungsten triple bond Cr, which is actually the identification of this Strock carbine complex. It was produced by Strock himself in 1982. The second example is quite tricky. So what happens in this case? It is a very stable osmium complex, osmium hydride ClCO. And three PPS three, and it is being treated with this mercuric trichloromethyl molecule. So this trichloromethyl molecule, what happens in this case? This is a source of this C minus Cl three. It is CCl three minus. It is trichloromethyl kind of anionic system. So here in this case, what happens? This C minus CCl three. One of the C minus CCl three will abstract the this hydride, and it will be liberated as chloroform, which is a very stable molecule. The other CCl3 minus will be liberated. They will liberate the Cl minus because you see in the Riemann-Tieman reactions, you have actually uh, saw, actually have seen that is a, when this KOH CH CCl3 mixture is actually there, when potassium hydroxide is treated with this chloroform, so this OH minus will abstract the proton and CCl3 minus will be produced and it will be liberated one Cl minus in the form of KCl and it will produce this dichlorocarbene that is double bond. That is dot dot Cl CCl2. So here one of the CCl3 minus will be abstracted and the proton of the osmium bound, and it will be liberated as chloroform. And the, the one other CCl3 minus it will liberate the Cl minus, and dichlorocarbene molecule will be formed, and this CCl2 will be bound to the osmium center. And now since this CCl2 is a carbene kind of moiety, which is having a heteroatomic center, that is a, a heteroatomic center is a chlorine. And also osmium is bound to the pi acidic CO and PPA three ligands. That is why it forms a fissured type of carbene compound. A fissured type of carbene compound is produced here. Now, what happens in this case? Osmium double bond CCl2. The Cl minus is intact here, and two PPA threes are there, and the trans to the is Cl, and the one CO is there. So it's a fissured type of carbene. We can also you can also say it is intermediate between fissure and shock. But I will specifically, or I will, um, I will actually be leaning towards the fissured kind of carbene compound. So when this fissured type of carbene compound will be treated with this aryl lithium, that is two equivalent. So this Ar minus will be bound to the osmium 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 center. And what happens in this carbon osmium bond because it's a carbon center. And what happens in this case? This lithium chlorides will be eliminated because it is lithium plus, and two actually chlorides are there. That's why it will be liberated as lithium chloride. And also, one molecule of ArCl will also be eliminated. So one molecule of Ar actually remains that is bound to the carbon of this osmium bound to the osmium center. That's how in this case this chloride actually gets eliminated in the form of ArCl that is chloro aryl chloride. 
and also the two molecules of chlorine that is also eliminated in the form of lithium chloride it is a very stable inorganic salt so lastly we are left with this kind of intermediate carbine that is intermediate between fischer and strock a osmium triple bond car is bound to these two pph3 one chloride and one co this was again produced by roper at 1980 is ar is nothing but the orthodolyl group so next question the next question is regarding the comparing the different kinds of uh, tungsten carbon bond lengths in the following compound so you see in the following compound there are actually three kind of tungsten carbon bonds are present one is the tungsten carbon triple bond one is the tungsten carbon double bond and another one is the tungsten carbon single bond and this is actually stabilized by this dimethyl phosphoneoethane that is dmpe which is abbreviated in the form dmpe tungsten ch2cme3 ch3cme3 and ccme3 this compound is actually produced by mr charchil in 1979 Uh, when he has been able to isolate this tungsten compound which is actually able to accommodate three kind of tungsten carbon bond single bond double bond and triple bond so from the basic uh, chemistry knowledge we know that is single bonds are actually longer in nature the double bonds are actually uh, more shorter in nature and the tungsten and the and the triple bonds are actually sh more, the shortest ones so what happens in this case this carbon is actually sp3 hybridized this carbon is sp2 hybridized and this carbon is sp hybridized that's why in this case the angle between wcc is 124 degree which is close to a sp3 kind of system in this case this is tetrahedral kind of system in this case you see that is the C, car, this is a sp2 carbon and between w and c the angle is 150 50 degree you see that is the form sp3 and sp2 and sp the angles are actually 104.5 degree 120 degree and 180 degree so the angle is actually gets in is increasing if we increase the electronegativity from sp3 via sp2 to sp here also the same happens this sp3 that is 224 degree this lowest angle it is um, uh, sp2 carbon that is actually higher in angle that's why it is 150 degree and is the sp system that's why it is 175 degree that's how in this case the angles are increasing but the question is not regarding the angle it is regarding the bond lengths so you know because the electronegativity of the sp carbons are most and the electronegativities of the sp3 carbons are the lowest so in this case the carbon is more most electronegative in case of this carbine kind of system but in case of this the electronegativity is even dropped because it is sp2 carbon so the difference between electronegativity of this uh, tungsten carbon is lower and also in this case this carbon is sp3 in nature that's why it is least electronegative so the difference between in electronegativity between the tungsten and carbon here is actually least that's why the tungsten carbon bond is more stable or more stronger in this case of this bond in this case the bond is actually the weaker than the previous one and the bond is weakest in case of this sp3 attached tungsten atom so here you can see the wc alkyl bond is having a bond length 225 225 ppm pm picometer the w alkylidine c alkylidine is this this sp2 carbon the bond length is 194 pm that is even lower that's why the bond state is increased because the bond length with the decrease in bond length the bond state increases and in the last case what happens when the tungsten carbon alkylidine bond the bond length is 178 picometer that is even lower than the wc alkylidine bond so you see in this case from alk c alkylidine to the wc alkyl the bond strength or the bond lengths the bond length specifically are increasing that's why from wc alkylidine alkylidine to w via wc alkylidine to wc alkyl the bond strength is actually decreasing so the high, so the order of the wc bond lengths is wc alkyl greater than wc alkylidine greater than wc alkylidine so here also 
in this case we will the we will discuss between the two different types of chromium carbon bonds in the following compound so here it is a compound where you see this is a kind of struck carbine because chromium is actually an r transition metal and here in this but in this case the co molecules are actually attached to the chromium that's why the stabilizing effect is actually also occurring here one is the and does this carbine carbon atom that is the mec triple bond mec mec is a carbine ligand and this iodide ligands are actually trans to one another so what is happens in this case uh, there are two kinds of chromium carbon bonds here firstly is the all equatorial the chromium carbon bond between the chromium and carbon monoxide which is having a chromium carbon bond and the second one is the chromium carbon bond between the carbine ligand uh, the cme so here you can see from the bond length character that is the chromium c bond length here it is 195 picometer but the chromium c bond that is happening between the struck carbine and chromium is 169 picometer so firstly inevitably you should know that is since it is a single bond and is triple bond and i have already stated that triple bonds are stronger in nature because the bond length is actually decreased because the carbon is sp hybridized and the carbon and the carbon here the single bonds are actually having higher bond length they are actually not that much stable and they are actually able to because the carbon though it is a carbon here is actually lying is a sp between sp3 and sp2 so the bond between chromium and carbon is also shifting between sp3 and sp2 that's why in this case the and this is actually a, a, a actually distinctly it is a triple bond between chromium and carbon that's why the bond strength here actually much more in this case so the bond length is actually lowered in case of this chromium carbine system you can also see that is the chromium c methyl angle is actually 180 degree almost that's why it is suggesting that it is actually completely a linear system and a linear in case of linear system the chromium carbon bond is actually c is sp in nature but what happens in this case the chromium carbon is 195 ppm not that much lower compared to this chromium c because there can be a resonance structure where the double bond will occur between this chromium and carbon and so the bond length then will be a bit lower so the bond strength will become high so on the general basis i will say it is a metal carbine bonds are actually shorter than the metal carbonyl co bond the metal triple bond cr bond is axis linear or nearly linear so the angle will actually deviate between 170 degree to 180 degree and lastly the mc triple bond is axis is not linear intermolecular interactions and packing effects are responsible for deformation so here in this case if you ever find such carbene carbine system when this bonds the metal carbon carbon carbine bond is actually not linear so there are there will be two factors that will be responsible firstly it will be the linear that is the intermolecular interactions between the other molecules and the other molecule and the packing effects are actually also responsible in this case so if we have a brief comparison for the chromium carbine bond here is bond length is less than that is of the chromium carbon bond of the chromium carbonyl so in this case i actually uh, summarize three reactions when by one by one we will see what are the following product what are the actually products in this case so the question uh, eight here is actually having the one in in first case this is a trans x co whole four m triple bond c bond r this m is the chromium molybdenum tungsten x is uh, cl br or i that is any kind of halide and molybdenum uh, chromium molybdenum tungsten are the early condition metals so here in this case in the first slide i have actually said about the formation of this carbine molecule so when, what happened in that case in that case a fischer carbine was treated with the bx3 moiety and we had this trans x co whole four m triple bond c r the fischer carbine so in the first slide i have to discuss about the formation of this compound so when it will be treated with this y minus what will be happening and what it is it is do with this cp minus that is the c5h5 minus the second question is the x co whole four cr uh, triple bond cr when it will be treated with the pme3 what will be the product and in the last option the cp co whole two mn uh, triple bond cme and the counter anion is x when it will be treated with this methyl lithium so what will be the product
so one by one we will see what happens so firstly when trans x co whole four m triple bond cr is here and we they are actually written this y minus we'll have this y minus as a potential nucleophile because y is actually carrying negative charge so it has a very much electron density so it will be attacking on the electronically deficient center so what happens in this case the carbon is actually bound to r group and the r groups are not specified as any electron withdrawing substituent that's why the carbon we are unsure about the nature of the carbon whether it is electrophilic or it is nucleophilic but in this case the metal is actually having high electron density though it is having a high electron density it is actually attached to the carbonyl centers which are actually able to drag the electron density from the metal center by stabilizing its low oxygen state and also the any x is actually by getting bound to the metal center and i have already told that the trans effect from of the carbonyl ligands are much higher in nature so that's why the the molecules that are present in trans position to the this carbonyl ligand will be actually labile ligand will be acting as labile ligand so this x will be eliminated as x minus by the aid of this nucleophile y minus and instead of x y will occur so this trans y co whole four m triple bond c r carbine will be formed so in this case since this x was firstly trans to this carbine center and carbines are actually having a very high trans effect so this x minus will be liberated in presence of this y minus that is a potential nucleophile and this nucleophile will be bound to the metal center in the trans position to the carbine center and in the second option what happens in this case is a c5h5 minus in the c5h5 minus is actually a cp minus cp minus is actually a six electron donor ligand and also it is negatively charged and in the version it, it can in eta one manner it can donate one two electrons in eta three manner it can donate actually uh, four electrons and eta five manner it can donate six electrons so in this case also the molecule x is at that group x is trans to the carbine center that's why this x will be liberated as x minus and eta 5 c5 h h minus on account of being a bulky nucleophile it will be attacking on the metal center but here is a technical glitch that what happens with the co because in that in this step we are actually assumed y is a strong nucleophile and a two electron donor but in this case what happens since c5 h5 minus is a six electron donor that's why and this x was a two electron donor so four more electrons are actually produced by this c5 h5 minus ligand so this eta5 c5 h minus has two options one of the options is either it should bind it is eta1 manner so that the only it can donate two electrons thus by replacing x minus so all the co's will be remaining and the second option is whether it will be bound by this eta 5 manner when it will be actually donating all the six electron so it actually displacing a two electron ligand it is itself producing six electron ligands so there is a excess four electrons so the extra four electrons will be liberated by the form of two co or it can donate by the eta 3 fashion and by the eta 3 fashion if it donates four electrons so so then x minus and one co will be remaining and this eta and it will be acting as a eta 3 ligand but what happens experimental derived fact is uh, cp minus is more commonly bound this eta 5 mole fashion so the eta 5 center will be donating the six electrons so these six electrons will be donated towards the metal center so instead of so it is actually liberating x minus that is a two electron donor instead it is giving six electrons so you would have an excess of a four electron so these four electrons will be liberated or, or adjusted by the liberation of neutral CO molecules, which are each two electron donors. So two molecules of CO will be donating four electrons. So two molecules of CO will be liberated from the metal and it is actually left with this two CO instead of the first case where it is four CO molecules. So the product is eta 5 CP CO whole to M triple bond CR. So coming to the second option, what is the X CO whole four? CR the triple bond CR is actually bound to the PME3 so what happens also in this case so here also this PME3 group has a high electron density because phosphorus atom this uh, phosphines are actually electronically rich rich and actually potential nucleophiles 
and this carbon here is also a new have a bit amount of nucleophilicity because the chromium is actually stabilized by the co that is the highly stabilizing low as pi acidic the high electron density stabilizing co ligands if the pme3 group attacks on the carbon the electron density is shifted on the chromium and the extra electron density on chromium will be delocalized between the among the four highly pi acidic co ligands so this carbon is having high amount of electrophilic it is actually electrophilic in nature and because the pme3 is nucleophilic in nature the pme3 will attack on the carbon here not on the co because in this case when it is attacking on the carbon the bond actually gets shifted on the chromium center putting a negative charge on it now this negative charge will be stabilized by the co molecules which are all actually very much highly pi acidic ligands that's why the low oxygen state of the metal and the electron density on the metal is actually distributed among all the co molecules so this reaction will occur and it will be acting as a kind of carbon system and in the last case what happens is the cpco hold to mn triple bond cme that is plus and this is an anion is that is x minus what happens it is it is methyl lithium so methyl lithium again in this case the nucleophile will be attacking on the carbon here also the nucleophile methyl minus will be attacking on the carbon and since this is already positively charged so the anion corresponding anion x minus will be liberated in the form of lix that is a salt and this methyl will be bound to the carbon and in this case this is a mn co hold to cp c so this is also a carbene i would rather suggest this is an intermediate carbene between fisher and schrock because in this case if you have a look at the metal center the metal is actually having negative metal is actually a late transition metal not an rd1 just like schrock and the electron withdrawing co substituents are pi acidic there so it is indicating towards formation of the fisher carbene but in this case also you can see there are no heteroatomic substituent present on the carbon still some kind of hyperconjugative structures can be drawn in case of this methyl because we do have six hyperconjugable hyperconjugable um, uh, photons that's how in this case this is actually tilting towards the fisher carbene but it has a shock type of nature too so in this case in the first two examples we have actually stated how the trans effect of the carbine can control the incoming of the ligand or the guest ligand and also in the last two cases we have discussed how from the fisher carbine by the uh, the shrock carbine by the by addition of a uh, strong base on nucleophile that is methyl lithium or me3p that's how this kind of phosphines we how we can produce this kind of carbene systems which are having significant or significant distinct properties than the fisher or the shrock type of carbene molecules so coming to the last question it is uh, the reaction between what happens when cp2 ta cl2 uh, ch cme3 it is a molecule i have discussed already is reacted with ethylene so what happens in this case this is the molecule cp2 ta cl2 double bond ch cme3 is actually bound, is reacted with this ethylene so it is nothing but a kind of alkyl metathesis reaction we have actually uh, read about this salt metathesis where two partners actually able to exchange between that the two groups here also the two groups will be exchanged between two alkenes because here you can see this alkene kind of system this is also an alkene so this is a specific or classical example of alkene metathesis reaction so this alkene metathesis reaction in this case what happens between this carbon carbon and tantalum carbon bond a kind of 2 plus 2 cycloaddition kind of reaction takes place and tantalum carbon bond and these boost these two alkene the carbons are actually equivalent in nature so this bond will be inserted between this tantalum carbon bond so it will be producing this cpcl2 ta ch2 ch2 this cme3 this is a specific specific class of metal cycle that is formed now what happens just remember about what happened in the case of this tebbes uh, reagent in case of tebbes reagent in case of tebbes reagent when this tantalum carbon carbon oxygen bond is there the tantalum oxygen the bond was collapsing between this tantalum oxygen bond and the olefin was liberated here also in this case what happens the tantalum carbon bond the ring opening will produce in the opposite direction because here it was bound to this tantalum carbon cme3 now the ring will collapse in the opposite direction 
so here what happens this this ch2 ch2 double bond will be shifted towards this tantalum carbon and this tantalum carbon cmec substituted bond will be now transferred to this this carbon carbon bond so here what happens the cmec c double bond ch2 is produced as one of the alkenes and cp2 tscl2 double bond ch2 is this is the other class of the tantalum carbon so that's how in this that's how what happens in this case the between this cme3 and the hydrogen the the hydrogen is going from here to here and the tantalum bound tantalum carbon bound cme3 is going to the alkene so here also in this case two ch2 and cme3 groups are actually being extended between these two centers or the these two species that's how why it is uh, termed as this alkene metathesis reaction in the metathesis reaction two groups are exchanged between two uh, moieties here also the cme3 and ch2 groups are exchanged between two moieties so that's how in this specific case this is the product there is a uh, substituted olefin and since this is more stable than this unsubstituted olefins you know because the substituted olefins are actually more stable than the unsubstituted ones so the substituted uh, olefin is actually producing and the inactive species cp2 tscl2 double bond ch2 is produced now uh, this is actually end of this uh, presentation now the session is actually open for uh, question answering so you can go on and ask for any kind of uh, kind of uh, doubt if you have